Hi everyone, it is Brianna Wilkerson here from Made Well, a coaching practice designed to empower others to be healthy and thrive in all areas of their lives, right? So I am a health coach, primarily a holistic health coach that is super passionate about people experiencing true health um, transformation and as well as a little bit of a purpose coach or life coach, just really helping women as well uh, journey into truly living the life and callings that they're meant to live. Um, I believe everyone has a unique purpose at hand, right? And then I also mentor other health coaches, so I'm a little bit of a business coach as well. Anyways, so this video is to go along with the Whole30 Challenge that is coming up March 4th that I will be leading um, in the Facebook group, Restart Your Health Community. And it's all about really helping you figure out which version of the Whole30 is really where you need to start. So the full Whole30 is what many people do. You love my shirt? I didn't even plan that. I am Whole30. Uh, it's really about helping you figure out what are the best ways for you to go about really experiencing change in your health um, that goes beyond just the scale but goes beyond to a deeper work and physically and mentally just transforming your life, right? So I'm just going to go through the six. There's also a blog post that goes along with this that if you really just need to visually see, I'll post that as well for you. All right, so the first one is the full Whole30. Okay, so really what that is is no sugar or artificial sweetener. Just say no. So no maple syrup, no honey, no agave, no equal, no stevia, no, anything like that, right? We want our body to become from being sugar adapted on fuel to fat adapted. We want our energy to come from the stored fat, but also the energy that we're eating in from fat and carbohydrates on a daily basis. All right, no alcohol. So no wine, no beer, no champagne, no vodka, no rum, no whiskey, no tequila. Don't even go there. You know, just say no, okay? There are many reasons why it does have sugar. They do just have all kind of different things that you just don't need. It can be just empty calories, right? So for this purpose of the Whole30, we want to um, reset our body, reset our mind into learning to operate on the most whole and nutritious foods possible, okay? Um, we're saying no to grains, so no wheat. I mean no gluten or gluten-free grains. So no wheat, no rye, no barley, no oats, no corn, no rice, no millet, no quinoa. Um, no amaranth, no buckwheat, just say no. Just say no. On legumes, we are saying no to beans of all kinds. Black, red, navy, white, red, pinto, whatever. Lentils, and even peanuts. So peanuts are actually a legume. So they're not a nut, they're a legume. And that's the reason why we're saying no to legumes is pretty much just because of the way it's grown. Um, it has a, also has an anti-nutrient that make certain nutrients unavailable to our body, but that just mess with our digestive lining. Because think about it. When you eat beans, what happens? Yep, yep, yep. We don't need to go there, right? But there are some exceptions. So green beans, snow peas, and sugar snap peas are exceptions. You can have those. And that's just because of how that's grown and how the pod is. And, oops, my notes went away. All right, so you, do, you can have those. And then we're saying no to dairy. So... Cow, cow, goat, sheep, milk products. Just We're just saying no to those. There are some exceptions, again, and that's clarified butter or ghee. You can have that. Um, and the really why that is is that you've clarified means you've taken away the milk particles um, and you're taking away the lactose and all that and we're just having mainly the fat portion. We're also saying no to preservatives on the, whole third, on the full Whole30. So carrageenan, MSG, any added sulfites. And the reason why... Those things really mess with your body. You're thinking, oh, like, it's just a preservative. But if it is preserving a food to last longer or to be stable in an unnatural way, it's going to mess with you. Just, just know that. These last two are important. You are going to say no on all of the Whole30 resets to recreating baked goods, treats, or junk foods with approved foods. So even though almond flour is allowed, you're not going to go there and make almond flour pancakes or muffins. You're not going to go there and make almond flour paleo bread or anything like that. And the reason is, it's that you're fine. You're going to be fine physically because it's 
you know, it's those foods are not typically problematic for most people, but the, it's your mind that's not changing. You're, you're still treating, you're still teaching yourself to have treats or have desserts and so forth, right? So you just want to really be, you want to kind of break that and you want to train your mind as well as your body to not have to go to these things. All right, and the last thing is that you're not going to step on the scale or take measurements during the Whole30. So you take them before and you take them after. And the reason why that is, is because it is not a scale or losing battle that we are fighting when we are doing Whole30. It is about changing your health so you can change your life. Now, will you lose weight? Probably, most likely, especially the first time. Will you lose some inches? Yeah, probably, most likely, especially the first time, right? But you really want to focus on the non-scale victories. You want to focus on really having victories that, such as, I have more energy now. I don't have any more digestive issues. Oh, wait, I, my skin's cleared up. My allergies don't seem, seem to be as bad because, let me tell you, your quality of life will improve with those non-scale victories. Your quality of life will improve when you do this full Whole30 especially and do it well. Um, and not to say your quality of life won't improve on the other resets, but there's a reason why all of those things are taken out. So, But I understand not everyone is ready to do the full Whole30, right? So that's why I really wanted to make it a point to really talk about the other resets that you can do to start. But before I go there, just know that you may not get all the full benefits because you're still including some of these foods, right? But if you need to start somewhere, start somewhere. It is better than not starting at all. So the next one after the full Whole30, which is typically what you'll hear about when you go look up anything Whole30, is the craving busting Whole30. Now the main difference for these is that you're taking out nuts and seeds and dried fruit, but um, but I think you're allowed legumes. I think you're allowed legumes. If I'm wrong, I'm going to go ahead and correct it later. But the reason why you're mainly taking out nuts and seeds and dried fruits... Okay, let's just check this. Craving busting hole 30. Okay, but anyways, moving on. I want to keep focused. The reason why you take out nuts and seeds and dried fruit is because... Let's be honest. When you eat dates, when you eat raisins, when you eat all of those, they're pretty sweet because they're dried and they're concentrated. The sweetness is concentrated. So if your problem is just cravings, you might want to cut them out. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm on day 25 of Whole30. And this Whole30 has been harder because I think I've been, it's my first month of working full time. I've also... I've cooked a lot more, but I've also been busier, so sometimes I'm just getting quick snacks or quick meals. And I've been eating a lot of dried fruit um, in the RX bars that are Whole30 approved. And it's fine, but you know, and plantain. And, and I think at the end of the day, that's not helped my cravings as much. So I'm going to be done the Whole30 in five days, but afterwards, I'm, I know this now. I'm not going to say, hey, I need to do another one. What I'm going to do is like, okay, I'm more aware of how things are now. I'm going to just reduce the amount of dried fruit and dried fruit really and sweet, even sweet starchy vegetables that I have because I don't want to be controlled by sugar, natural or unnatural. I want to be able to be empowered to really fully manage my, my sugar and my health. Thanks for whoever joined. You can say hello. Uh, and, and so that's kind of the reason why you eliminate the dried fruit. Now, nuts and seeds are just one of those foods that you can just continue to eat a lot of like they don't really fully satisfy and so that is why for the craving busting I just messed up my hair even more you cut it out right all right and the next one is the anti-inflammatory reset one second guys All right, the craving, um, the anti-inflammatory reset. Now this is, hey Toby, yes you joined me, right? I'm so excited. Uh, the anti-inflammatory reset is probably one of the best if you really struggle with, if you just really struggle with any autoimmune condition 
as well as inflammation. Now, inflammation is your body's way of protecting itself. So if you hurt your wrist, it's going to be inflamed saying don't use it. It's trying to heal itself. But also, there's a lot of internal inflammation that we all face on a daily basis that we just don't know. And we just fully aren't really walking in a healthy way to reduce that inflammation. So in this, in this Whole30 Reset, you're allowed, and you're allowed um, grains, you're allowed legumes, but you're, no, sorry, you're taking out grains and legumes and dairy, but you're also the addition to the, um, the original one, you're taking out eggs and nightshades. Now, nightshade vegetables, so what eggs are, so eggs um, have, um, the, what the egg white actually does is protect the egg yolk from bacteria that is going to harm it you know, thinking about it, that's why it's, you know, protected. So the, the yolk is the embryo, right? It's supposed to be growing up into something. And so the egg white will often hold on to the, to the bacteria and prevent it from going the egg yolk. So if you're having the whole eggs, it's just, it might mess with your stomach if you're struggling with inflammation. Now, people might argue, hey, we'll just eat the egg yolk. Yes, but the egg whites are most likely going to touch the egg yolk. So you just say no and you avoid it. Now, nightshades. Nightshades are pretty much a group of plants that contain co compounds that may be inflammatory to those who have digestive sensitivity. Excuse me. So anti-inflammatory, um, right? Um, 60 to 80% of our immune system is in our gut. So what we eat will affect our inflammation and our health. So that's why these nightshades tend to cause digestive sensitivity and inflammation in some people. So these include, um, I'm just going to name a few, but you can feel free to go to the blog post to look at the rest. Tomatoes, peppers, um, eggplants, certain berries, goji berries, um, hot sauces, um, and potatoes even. Really, actually, mainly the white potatoes. And so if you know that you have a lot of inflammation in your body, from something. And if you know that you have an autoimmune condition, such as celiac disease, irritable bowel syndrome, candida, whatever, then you might want to do this reset and just cut out any problematic foods. Okay? Um, the next one is the energy busting whole 30, no, energy whole 30 reset. No, we don't want to bust energy, we want more of it. And that really you you can have legumes, but you take out caffeine. Yeah, I know, Toby, goji berries are a nightshade. I didn't, I didn't realize that either until I was looking it up. Um, but then, you know, you might not respond to all nightshades in the same way, but just for the sake of if you're doing an anti-inflammatory one, you do want to take it out because you just want to avoid anything that's going to harm you, cause you harm. Uh, so, yes, you take out caffeine. Reason why, if you want to learn to have more energy from natural sustaining foods, you just need to take out the caffeine because we often rely on caffeine for energy. All of us do. I do sometimes, right? Um, you want your body to become, again, fat adapted and running on um, fat and, you know, the carbs you eat as energy. Um, the second to last one is the vegan reset. So for this, you do have legumes because you're not having the protein source, right? And, but, and you can have grains, but you gluten-free grains. And so that's stuff like quinoa, buckwheat, aramanth rice uh, because um, you just kind of need a little bit added more protein and stuff, right? Um, and those are some of the areas that you can get that. You are allowed soy and beans because, uh, again, you need protein in some way and some fiber, but you want to be have the most organic and least processed version of those two as possible. And with beans, you want to take a lot of extra care in preparation, such as prolonged soaking, extended cooking, rinsing, sprouting, and even fermenting to take away the anti-nutrients that make certain nutrients unavailable to our body, and so it can release it. And then the last one is the basic reset. The basic reset is you're saying no to gluten-containing grains, dairy, and alcohol, and stepping on the scale. But you, you, you're, you're limiting your sugar, right? So it's not like, oh, I can have sugar. No, you got to limit it. So this is at the core, the very basic. You're taking away gluten, dairy, and alcohol. But this one's harder because there's a lot more grayer areas and you just really need to learn and be self-aware and ask yourself, am I eating this just for a craving? Am I eating this to replace? And so forth. So just know that the basic is not, might not give you as much results as the full Whole30.
but it's still worth it, right? It's still worth it to, to try it in the end. So of these, which reset do you wish to start with, right? At some point, whether you're doing the Whole30 with us on March 4th, or you're thinking about doing the Whole30, I really encourage you to go through the blog post that I'll post, post here and think about which one is the best place for you to start. I am doing a group challenge, um, a free group challenge in the Restart Your Health Community group, but I also have one more spot for the paid one-on-one -on -one coaching. And the paid one-on-one -on -one coaching is two 45-minute sessions, one at the beginning of the Whole30 and one at the end, guiding you in preparing and reintroducing. And then during the month, you have complete access to email me personal questions um, and really get support you need, whether you need me to look at a food journal and so forth, right? So that is something that I had four spots, but I only have one left now. So if you are interested, you need to let me know ASAP because um, I want to fill up that spot and I want to help someone that really would like and know that the one-on-one -on -one support will support them. And that is 165 CI or 197 US for that one-on-one -on -one support. That's technically six weeks of support, and that's really a good deal. And so... Let me know if you guys have any questions about the six resets. I'll post the blog posts, um, and I'll also post the link to sign up for the Whole30 Challenge to get the emails and the support. And then you need to let me know ASAP if you're interested in the one-on-one -on -one coaching. All right, so that's it from me. Have a great Thursday, and I will talk to you guys soon.